I'm Cindy Guerrero. And I'm Tomas Guerrero. And together, we're bringing you voices from around the university to talk about things that matter to you, our students. This, this is RG Voices. Hey, all. So we are going to talk today about how to give a college level presentation, um, because you might be asked in your 1301 or 1302 class or both mm -hmm. uh, to present over something somewhere, whether it be just in class or in a bigger arena, like another event in, around the university or around the community. And we know that's not always the most favorite thing to do. <laughs> um, so we want to just give some tips and address any worries you may have. Right. Um, so for effective presentations, what I like to tell my students is just be as natural as you possibly can be. Mm -hmm. um, you have to remember that, or you should remember that you are prepared. You know what you're talking about. Right. You are the expert of the thing that you prepared and you know all your information, so there's no reason to be nervous about that. You right. know what you're doing. So you just deliver it in the most natural way possible. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, another tip is to um, remember that we are all human, and so oh, yeah. your audience is not some dictator or ethereal sort of being that knows all and is all. It's going to judge you. Right, and send right, you to right. Heck. <laughs> right, yes, exactly. If you stutter or do right. anything like that. Um, <clears throat> so just uh, try to, to keep that in mind right. when you're talking to other people. Right. Another thing to keep in mind is, you know, just as nervous as you are, mm -hmm. you know, if, if the class is giving presentations, your classmates are nervous too. Right. And the last thing, I mean, you just have to think, like, how would I want to be treated right. if I stuttered? Mm -hmm. You know, I have a lot of uh, uh, classes that by the end when they're giving presentations, they're very supportive of each mm -hmm. other. So somebody will walk up and they'll be like, I'm so sorry, I'm very nervous. And people in the audience will be like, no, you're cool. Just go for it. It's all good. Right. And that, that, that welcoming environment is exactly what it should feel like right. in any class. You, you right. should feel comfortable and remember exactly what what you know what was said earlier, which is you are you are the the champion of this mm -hmm. idea. If you do it a certain way, you are the master. You are the creator of this, and it's up to you on how it feels most comfortable. Right, right. And if you're worried that you're gonna ramble or stutter or stumble over words. All you really need to do is just slow down your speech a little bit. Mm -hmm. Try not to talk so fast. I know your brain moves fast, but you can slow down your speech so you won't um, come upon those moments where you are having difficulty thinking of a word or you uh, say the word too fast so you stumble over it, whatever mm -hmm. it may be. So just, uh, just take a pause, mm -hmm. brief pause, think about what you want to say, mm -hmm. and then go ahead and say it in a slow, calm manner, and that'll, right. that'll take away the moments where you stutter, and then that'll take away some of the nerves because you start to realize, oh, I, I can do this. I'm not right. messing up, so I'm okay. Right. Um, and then just remember that every nervous tick that you may think is showing is emphasized a lot in your own mind. Right. So if you feel like, oh my gosh, I'm shaking a lot, or I'm sweating, People or what do they, like, they will not it. see it. No, <laughs> they won't. Um, so it's just like, yeah, we're all, our own worst enemy, basically. Right. It, yeah, essentially what it comes down to is you, if you feel like you're doing something wrong, mm -hmm. you're replaying it over and over in your head, so obviously it gets amplified. Mm -hmm. But then... You know, try to think. Well, what is your audience actually seeing? They're all just kind of sitting there, just waiting patiently for right, you. Right. They're they're not there like tapping their toes or like tapping their watch, right. and they're not like ugh, right? You no, know, it's it's this is your time, mm -hmm. and own it. And you know, just to give you some encouragement, I used to be the type of person that got really nervous before presentations, but then I would let that get out of my mind, and I realized if I mess up. I'm just going to pretend like that was part of it. Right. Uh, so I would walk in and I would just, as confidently as I could, I would present this information and I would I would try to incorporate something interesting. Mm -hmm. I would have the audience participate. Mm -hmm. That's something to keep in mind too is, you know, when you're giving these presentations, make sure that you're, you're keeping in mind your audience mm -hmm. and you're, you're engaging them. And the more fun that they have, the more likely they are to remember the cool stuff that you did versus, oh, he tripped a little bit on the desk. Right. Like, that in your head, like, is going to be the worst thing in the world. But everybody's going to remember, it's like, oh, we had fun because he had, right. he had that fun music playing in the background. <laughs> right. They're going to remember the cool stuff before right. they remember the terrible and embarrassing things that you right. did. 
Um, and time flies. Oh, yeah. It really does. Oh, so yeah. even anything like, say, they tell you it's got to be a 10-minute presentation, you think it's going to take forever, but it, it really does fly by. Right. Uh, just another tip on my end is, and, and this, again, is totally up to the parameters of the class, but if, if they are allowing you to do whatever you want during a presentation, try not to default to PowerPoint. Not because those are bad, but because when we're trying to really emphasize how cool our idea is, you know, I, I like to ask my students, what was the last memorable PowerPoint that you sat through that you learned something from that wasn't yours? And it's kind of hard, short of like, unless they were using it to study or it's printed out for them. But, you know, so why would you want to continue to do that? Right. right? So try to create something that is uniquely you that you can use to kind of emphasize and remember that you can have your audience be the main contributor if your if your topic allows it to mm -hmm. have them do something right again if your professor allows it uh, as well yes of course within the parameters of what the assignment is right right um so to sum that all up uh the way to give an effective college level presentation is to be prepared mm -hmm. um which you will be uh, because you've been with this subject that you're going to present for a while. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, remember that nerves are natural and oh, yeah. that they are overcomable. Mm -hmm. um, if you just keep in mind that we're all humans and we make mistakes and it's okay. Mm -hmm. And there are ways to get around that, like speaking slower or um, making your speech more natural or remembering that everything that you may think that is negative about your presentation or your, your nerves or your tics is emphasizing your head more than it is showing. Right. And so it's okay. I promise you'll be okay even if you totally hate presentations. Yeah. And the only way you can get better is through practice. Right, right. And what better time to practice than in a class that's very welcoming with your ideas. Right, yes. And it is an important uh, skill to gain because... It's not to embarrass you. It's no. that your ideas matter. Mm -hmm. And the academic community that you're a part of now wants to hear them. Right. And so you should feel good about that, oh, I yeah. think, that we want to hear from you. We want to see what you got. Absolutely. Yep. So as always, you can email us for questions or ask your professors. We'll be around. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank Bye. Thank you.